So good afternoon, uh, everyone, and welcome to Emma's Market Spotlight Norway. My name is Michelle Ronquillo, and I'm Emma's event manager. Emma unites music manager organizations across 13 European countries, which represent more than 2,000 managers across Europe. Our mission is to strengthen European managers globally through the Empower program, which encompasses education, advocacy, networking, and research. If you want to know more and stay up to date with the upcoming events, please visit our website, follow us on social media, and join our WhatsApp group. I will put the links in the chat. Also, I have two things for you today. Um, uh, at the end of the session, there will be a very quick survey that will pop up on a, a different window when you log off Zoom. So please uh, take, uh, I would say, 10 seconds to fill that up because it will really help us uh, with our future events. And also there is going to be a general attendee database that we are going to continuously, um, uh, yeah, fill it, fill it up with your with your contact details. So just make sure that your details are there and they are going to be shared with um, the attendees of every event. Um, I'm going to just share the agenda of today. So today we have an incredible lineup. Um, Jess will be moderating, Jess Patrick will be moderating the conversation. Uh, Jess is our um, executive director. And um, and also there's going to be uh, some time for your questions. Uh, so if you have any burning questions, just write them in the chat and um, yeah, just will make sure that these get answered. Also, if you have any questions, just feel free to uh, direct message me. And without further ado, just over to you. Thanks so much, Michelle, and welcome everybody. Thank you for coming um, and being so on time because yeah, we have a packed schedule today, as you can see. Um, and I'm so, so happy to be here with all of these amazing speakers. Uh, I feel biased in saying this, but Norway is definitely one of my favorite countries and one of my favorite countries to work with in music because they are just overflowing with uh, venues, ideas, producers, all of these things. So we'll find out some more. Um, and I think, first of all, if we do a quick intro of everybody and then we'll move to um, uh, Tona has an amazing spotlight on Norway in terms of facts and figures. So great. Uh, uh, Celia, if you would like to start and just introduce yourself. <clears throat> yes. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Celia Larsenberga. I've worked in the Norwegian music industry uh, for almost 15 years. <laughs> um, started in uh, record labels, EMI. Uh, music, Warner Music, as a product manager and a &R. also been DJing, working in radio. And eight years ago, I started uh, a management and PR company called Little Big Sister, uh, which is my current job, um, where I work as a manager for uh, five or six Norwegian uh, artists working mainly in the Norwegian market. Amazing, thank you. Uh, Eric? Hello everyone, um, my name is Eric Egenes, is uh, how to pronounce my last name in Norwegian. Um, uh, I'm the general manager of uh, Bylarm, which is the largest showcase festival in the Nordics. Uh, we have been held since 1998 and originally the festival changed between cities, but once we, uh, then it was primarily a Nordic oriented, a Norwegian oriented festival, but when it changed to a more of a Nordic focus in 2008, we relocated permanently to Oslo. So that's where we're still located. Um, having our 27th edition, uh, this um, uh, 12th to 14th of September this year. So featuring about 120 acts every year, something like that. Uh, primarily Nordic, but also international acts. Uh, so um, it's um, 
nice way to get into Norway and to get out of Norway, I would say. A bit biased, but that's the way it is. Absolutely. I've been in this industry for 15 years or something like that. Worked in festivals the whole time, a bit in record labels and here and there, like a lot of us have. Uh, but festivals is definitely close to my heart. Awesome. Thank you, Eric. Uh, Nora? Hi everyone, thanks Jess for the intro. Uh, my name is Nora Mamdu. I don't really know how to pronounce my name in English, but yeah. Uh, I've worked in the industry for about 10 years or five years, depending on how you look at it. Everything from labels, I've been DJing also, still DJ, uh, work in radio. And right now I'm like a freelance agent trying to work with different parts instead of being locked down to one. So yeah, do a bit of consulting to festivals, to different projects and yeah, just all over the place really. <laughs> That's me. Perfect. Uh, Tona? Hi, thanks Jess. Uh, my name is Tona Østerdal. Uh, I'm the Managing Director of Music Norway. Um, and I have been working in like a broader sense of the arts and culture field for 20 plus years. Then I stumbled into the music industry for real for yeah, like five years ago, a little bit more than that, uh, working with Norwegian Live Music Association as it was called at the time. Uh, and I have been in music Norway for about a year. And I'll tell a little bit more about that later. Thanks. Perfect, I was just about to say. <laughs> um, uh, Ellen? Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Alan Buflatten. I run a 102 management, which I started around five years ago. Before that, I was at Music Norway for four years, developing their international PR strategies and working with a lot of the festivals, including Bularm in, in Norway. And yeah, I manage around like three artists in the pop. Uh, pop music field and also do some product management project in the fashion industry and like the wider cultural sector besides that. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Matilda? Hi everyone, I'm Matilda Urlian. Um, I've recently just started a management company called uh, Loon Music. Um, based from Bergen, the second biggest city in Norway, um, where I manage uh, two artists and a producer, but I also do some PR services and uh, consultancy within uh, concert production. Um, previously, I've been building up a um, indie label called Gems uh, for the last couple, three three years, starting in twenty twenty. And before that, I've been freelancing within um, concert production. Awesome. So as you see, we have quite a mix, um, lots of different backgrounds covered. So uh, and, and thank you all for being brief as well. Uh, with so many people, it <laughs> really cuts down on time. So um, next, it would be great to go to uh, Tona and find out more about the Norwegian market overall um what it looks like and how it's made up so yeah take it away thanks i'll try to share a little presentation here let's see if we can make this work um i'm gonna keep it try to keep it brief because talking uh, amongst the rest of this wonderful group is more interesting but i'm just gonna um the emma people have have asked me to Tell you a little bit more, like on, give an oversight of the Norwegian uh, market, um, both live and, and recorded, and say a little bit about collaborations. So I'm going to try to do that. But firstly, um, some words about Music Norway. Uh, our mission is to promote Norwegian music, basically, and uh, increase export. Um, and we work within all genres. Um, and we are a part of um, the Norwegian government's agent apparatus, as we call it. Um, that means that we're we're not a public servant organization, but we're still pretty close. Um, the Ministry of Culture and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs um, finance us um, 100%. And um, 
And we have also a role as an advisor for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs on all music related issues. Uh, the ways that we work and, and, and make uh, things happen is to do projects. We have capacity building programs, networking events, both in Norway and internationally. And we have grant schemes, um, uh, for instance, travel support, which is um, getting increasingly pro more popular uh, as prices are uh, going up all over the world uh, for traveling and production. Um, we, uh, the Norwegian music industry is quite small. We are a small country, um, and so is our music industry. Um, according to the, to Rambøl, uh, a research institute in Norway, um, the, we are estimated about 6.8 billion Norwegian crowns in income in 22, which is like the last year that the numbers are ready for, um, with the numbers coming in from live and from the recorded industry and from rights and export of course um this is still quite a small number and we are having some issues like getting uh the statistics uh for the music industry in Norway up and running uh, so i i we do think that this number is a little bit higher and, and as it turns out but we don't have this is the best number that we have Currently, um, talking a little, a little bit about live. Um, as you know, Norway is long and sparsely populated, but it really has a really um, interesting and diverse live scene. Uh, like you can see, concert revenues account for two thirds of the industry's total revenue in twenty two, uh, and there has been like an annual growth of eight percent every year since. Uh, 2012 um, and even though we are um, the the distances are far and stuff like that we have um, I would say a very vibrant live scene all over the country that is due to an active cultural policy uh, that goes way back uh, with venues and promoters getting public support to do shows that are otherwise not commercially um, um yeah um set to to exist um and but still even though there are a lot of festivals and a lot of venues all over the country the the main um live market is populated around the big cities so also like you can see 35 percent and bergen and, and Trondheim each 12 percent of the concert um being held uh there's a sort of a I don't know if you should call it a myth or whatever, um, of Norway being the country with the highest density of festivals per capita. Uh, I don't know if it's true or not. Uh, what I do know is that there is a lot of festivals and they're everywhere. A lot of them have real unique scenery. They're based outside in, in gorgeous nature uh, and they're everywhere. Um, what is um, important to bear in mind uh, touring in Norway is that uh, the distances are for reals. It would take you like, I would say 40, like 30, uh, 32 efficient hours to drive from south to north. Uh, and there has been so many stories uh, over the years of bands uh, booking shows in Norway and not realizing how far and also like the shape of our roads in some parts of the country. and. There, there not being a, a train uh, a possibility north of Narvik, for instance. So there, there is a this um, substantial amount of planning going into touring in Norway, if you're, especially if you're going up north, and if you are to explore the more rural areas. So that's worth mentioning. Um, but there are, like I said, um, truly amazing festivals um, that could. Uh, make some very like both introductions for new audiences of course in Norway but also be a valuable experience for the artists uh, Norway is uh, like a lot of other countries right now uh, Norwegian artists are making up a far greater portion of lineups than earlier uh, pre-pandemic years 
um, like we all know, increased travel costs uh, and high demand locally, especially in 2022 and 23, uh, has resulted in a lot of artists focusing on their, their own home countries um, instead of uh, performing uh, foreign, like and internationally. But um, there are, of course, uh, still a lot of international uh, artists touring and, and making concerts and, and festivals in Norway. And it's also a great part and a great thanks for our um, cultural policy that makes um, venues and festivals go around all over the country. Um, but you can see um, a lot of the festivals, uh, no, the, the concerts in Norway are small. 57% has less than 20,000 in turnover. Uh, and only 11% uh, has more than 200,000 in revenue. Uh, but still, the large concerts account of for 86% of the total concert revenue. So there's a there's a real um, spread in how this looks uh, if you look at the numbers. Um, and as, again, uh, as international trends goes, uh, also in Norway, consolidation reigns. Um, the main promoters being Live Nation, All Things Live, FKP, Scorpio, and Momentum. Momentum is for now uh, on Norwegian hands. I know the they are uh, talking about selling um, and are in liberations, but um, for now, Momentum is the only one of these that are still a Norwegian owned company. Um, when it comes to recorded and, and collabs, um, there is a strong focus on Norwegian language music tailored for the domestic market here as many other places right now. Um, at the same time, I, I think that both management and labels often want to collaborate with foreign artists, especially to like pay, uh, make way into new markets and reach new audiences. Uh, and some of you may have noticed um, Unskyld for a song that uh, Chris Holsten and the Swedish artist Thomas Stenström just uh, in January released that has been doing pretty well. Um, and I think collabs like that is really uh, interesting for a lot of uh, both management and labels. Uh, there are several Norwegian indie labels that do sign and release uh, international artists. Um, I guess a lot of you have heard about Small Town Super Sound, which is like a well-known cred label to say that. Um, other independent labels that has made an impact is Propeller, uh, Rune Gamofon, Hubro for more like the like niche jazz uh, experimental stuff and in the recordings. Um, and the, the I guess the, there, there is a fairly high um, level of organizations working within the music industry in Norway and Fulno uh, representing the indie labels uh, is quite a like active player, I would say, in, in, um, in making the, the indie label, um, uh, in the, yeah, doing collabs and, and uh, and making the, the music industry grow uh, from the indie label side as well. Uh, just a quick look at the charts right now. This is from Wednesday, I think. Um, as you can see, there's some, definitely some international songs on here, but also a lot of Norwegian acts. Um, so the, the local um, songs is still pretty strong. I guess 2022 was uh, the first year that we saw a lot of Norwegian acts on the uh, on the charts by the end of the year. Um, and this seems to be continuing into 23 and 24. Uh, here's another chart, Veglista, which uh, Vega is one of the larger newspapers in Norway. They do their own chart. Uh, and like you can see, there is um, a good mix, but a lot of local repertoire. Um, one of the things that we do in, in Music Norway is, of course, also facilitating collaborations and just networking events. Um, Bjørn is here with uh, Eric. Uh, we have a lot of international meeting places. Um, 
So be sure to look us up and, and hit us with a email or something if you wanna, if you're curious on how we work, we are always looking to get uh, good international industry people to come to Norway um, for our festivals here. And a lot of festivals are doing international management programs. I know much more problems, uh, uh, help me with the word um, delegate programs. Um, and this, uh, this is like one of our core um, activities. We also do trade missions, uh, both to like established markets and and, and emerging markets. Um, just bringing Norwegian industry professionals to meet or go to company visits uh, abroad with different uh, angles to, to each trip. Um, and we also collaborate uh, with some actors at song camps. So um, collaborations are still a, a very central part of what we do. Uh, like I said, do hit us up if uh, you're curious to know more and if we can help put you in contact with the Norwegian industry. Um, yeah, I guess that was it. Thanks. That was so useful. Thank you, Tina. That's uh, Tona. <laughs> That's uh, really, yeah, uh, really insightful and gives a great overview, especially some great places to start if people are wondering how to get uh, into Norway, especially. Before we dive into the kind of questions about the scene and trends and genres and all of that kind of stuff, um, I would love, Ellen, if you can speak a little bit about NEMA and the work that you do, especially, obviously, Emma being a management organization and uh, NEMA being one of our members, other managers might find this a useful place to connect. So. Mm. Yeah, of course. Um, NEMA in is the Norwegian Entertainment and Music, Norwegian Entertainment Management Association. Uh, it doesn't roll off the tongue, but we represent uh, both managers and agents uh, in Norway, um, both on like, uh, how do you say it, like um, industry programs, um, uh, tr trades and stuff like that, but also for the lobbying up against to the Norwegian government and also in partnership with Emma on the European level. It's a quite like a new organization, uh, fairly new. So it's being built uh, stone by stone, but we have some really good people with us and we have around 75 member companies now across management and, and agents. So yeah, we're getting there, but and very easy to to connect with us. We're always interested in learning from others and doing collaborations with um, yeah foreign business uh, industry people. So, if there's anything that you wonder around, like the overall management or agent situation, like we can be a good first uh, step and we'd be happy to like guide you to the correct people if there's any like specific questions or specific people you'd like to meet was that okay it's uh <laughs> just, I don't know. that gives a, a great <laughs> overview and i think yeah just uh want to highlight that it's a really great place to start if you do um if you're a manager and you're looking to connect on a management level in norway you, um, and and obviously it's great that you have the agents as well because a lot of people are always looking to meet agents in other countries. So <laughs> yeah, um, let's get started. And I wanted to start with the live industry. Obviously you have an incredible festival circuit as was so brilliantly highlighted uh, most amount of festivals per capita. But uh, I'm really interested to know more about the, the trends that you're seeing. Um, like what, what do people, what are festivals looking for and how you can get booked also i mean if anyone has anything on genre trends as well very interested in that um eric sorry to pick on you but it would be great to start with you as you are from a festival and you are uh that side of things um yeah what what do people what are you looking for in artists when you're you're booking for blm because you do book quite a lot of international artists i've seen a few uh, amazing ones there Happy to hear that, first of all, and um, 
obviously we look for good music, but uh, being a festival, uh, having certain aims to raise the profile of the artists we book or enable them to access a new market or a new uh, getting signed uh, or getting an agent deal or anything, we usually look for what their goals are by playing the festival. And that either means talking to the artists directly or if they have people working with them, talking with them about what are you aiming to accomplish with your showcase here. And then we try to facilitate that uh, in the ways that we can by finding the right venue or finding the right, um, uh, pitching it to the right people once we book it, like uh, to make sure that the right people are in the room. So it's, um, we're a John, quite genre liberal festival. Um, and we, a lot of the other festivals that Tuna mentioned, like Ultima, we have collaborations with, so that the more uh, with Ultima, the more contemporary music side of things can also be represented at Bilarm, whereas the more popular music-oriented uh, programming is something we do in partnerships with booking agents or record labels in the popular field. So it's uh, it's different things. Uh, and one of the... Uh, challenges I I could say is exactly what Tuna mentions uh, that the uh, home market in Norway is becoming more domestic mm -hmm. so a lot of artists that are come to Bilarm for international uh, from in the, internationally uh, where you usually could go on to other opportunities within Norway uh, quite easily but now we're seeing that, that there's uh, that's not as easy anymore it still happens, but that's definitely a challenge. Uh, and it's related to uh, the things Tuna mentioned with higher costs and also our currency is doing quite bad. Uh, and uh, being an importer, it's, um, uh, and the Euro being uh, a lot worse off than it was just two years ago. Um, it's a challenge for us. So, um, and also uh, I could add uh, the, um, being a Nordic festival, uh, we see on the live side that there's a lot more communication between the uh, uh, the live players in Norway with their Nordic um, with their Nor Nordic colleagues, and I think that has something to do with the consolidation that also Tuna mentioned that uh, they are in the same company, and uh, that means they communicate a bit a bit more. Uh, I don't feel like uh, the majors. Uh, for instance, uh, Warner in Norway, I don't feel like they communicate as much with their uh, Nordic um, colleagues as they do on the live side. So it's um, it's a bit different, uh, but whether it comes from the label side or the uh, live side for us, but we speak to both, both of them when it comes to booking artists. I don't know if that answered your question. I feel like I yeah, said no, absolutely. It, it does. Um, but... <laughs> I'm keen to know uh, about any trends. If anyone else has anything to add about trends they're seeing beyond Vilarm, like what genres are doing particularly well, what um, audiences are reacting well to. Is it mostly pop? Obviously, you have a history of having huge pop scenes, but um, yeah, uh, hip hop or folk like. Are, are there any scenes that you're seeing coming up and being really successful? Anyone want to take it? I uh, can elaborate a bit on that. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much, Nora. I, I work um, with consulting a couple of uh, different festivals and also like part of the booking group of one of the biggest, uh, yeah. And uh, what we've seen is that, um, and this is like a trend or not a trend, but like a tendency that you can see in Norway in general, not only when it comes to live, but since we're like a pretty small country with a pretty like small population, a lot of um, genres uh, instantly become niche because we're not that many people to create a scene. So if we want to like still have representation within like genres that are considered niche, then we have to look outside to bring in that is like for example with afrobeats like the last couple of years which is like really blowing up and is really like taking a part of the mainstream music uh, picture but we don't really have a really big afrobeat scene here in norway and that's when we look to like international to 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 bring people in and there's a lot of those kinds of genres that is not really niche but to become it here so yeah mm -hmm. 
That's great. Thank you. Uh, Celia, you were going to add something. I don't know if you would like to, that'd be great. I, I was just, uh, yeah, jumping in to um, uh, talk about the genre thing. Um, also totally agree with uh, Nora, what, what she said about the um, how how things are going now with the genres. I was just adding that in, on Spotify, like Tuna showed us in the beginning, um, pop music and what we call here in Norway fest music, party music is, um, uh, you know, it's it's always a big part of our top 50 because it's very social media driven and the young people listen to like, uh, music that is uh, easily digested uh, and get played a lot on the radio. And that's like super commercial pop music. It's not always the long-term uh, long term career artists that are behind these kind of hits, but they get huge in our way. And, and also uh, luckily for some of my artists, the urban, the urban side of pop uh, Norwegian rap has always been pretty big the the last eight years. Um, but when it comes to live, <clears throat> I think uh, a lot of uh, rock and more uh, the acoustic side uh, ha are having a great, you know, a healthy career when it comes to the live economic, just traveling a lot, playing shows, never being on Spotify top 50, but really also having a, you know, a healthy and good career. So it depends on, yeah, what your market is and what your goal is. Is it to uh, sell concert tickets uh, or is it to become a viral hit on Spotify or is it, you know, a bit of both is of course the goal, but that's hard. Uh, it sounds like oh, sorry. Sorry, it just sounds it sounds like there's a good opportunity here for international artists that work in specific niches in order yeah. to provide exactly. um, diversity throughout Norway as well. Um, I wanted to move on away from festivals, but to, to touring. Uh, what when people come to Norway, what are the best cities to hit? How many shows can you do and um, how how does it work? Do you tend to need an agent or do you, can you go direct to the venue? Like some countries uh, are very venue focused, some are very agent focused, some are very promoter focused. So I'd love to know more about that. Um, Matilda, I know you work with some amazing Norwegian artists. So I'd, when it comes to your booking shows, do you, uh, would you recommend cities and uh, whether to work with an agent or can you do it yourself? Mm, yes. Um, since Norway is like a um, small country or in, the, in, in terms of the world, it's a small country with a small population and our biggest city is like Oslo is 5 million and Bergen is like 500 or 300,000. So it's like um, to, to do concerts in Norway, I think it's often smart to start with the biggest cities because it's more niche in the villages or how to say it. So it's like um, Oslo, Bergen, Trondheim, uh, Stavanger. I think it's great cities to start with mm -hmm. and, and then to, but I, yeah, I think it's good to have a collaboration with an agent, but it's also, um, uh, you can also book shows like directly with the venues in the different cities as well but uh, yes uh, do they yeah tend, do they tend to do a lot of self-promoting um, like the venues put on shows themselves so you just go straight to them rather than through a promoter or external like Live Nation or FKP Scorpio or something um, it depends on the artist and, uh, and their career I guess uh, like for with my artists, um, I'm working with both artists that have agents. So it's, uh, it's, it's, yeah, to have, I'm sorry. I'm a no, 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 that's good. Um, Ellen, 
do you, uh, do you have anything to add in terms of again because you manage great acts that do a lot of shows so um do you have anything to add in terms of breaking into the Norwegian scene and booking your first shows there maybe mm. anyone who's thinking oh it sounds like a great place for me um it kind of depends because as Tuna also mentioned there are so so many festivals and it's like I'm from a small town with around 20,000 people and they had an international festival with international hip hop acts and rock acts playing and just within like an hour drive from my uh, hometown you could find like around 10 festivals I would say that has both oh. like high end international acts and and local ones a lot of those are independent festival that you can like contact directly you wouldn't necessarily need um an agent to do so and if you plan it wisely you can almost go on a festival summer tour uh it is very i mean it is hard to get into uh in a way because there are there's a lot of norwegian artists that can do 45 festivals in the summer like and can do like big big numbers and do pretty well on that and it's it is like the competition to the for those spots are quite hard or it's a bit it's a lot of competition for it but you can definitely do it I don't I think if you don't have anything going on you haven't really been uh playlisted you haven't had radio plays or you haven't had any like had any touchdown in Norway already I think that could be hard to get into unless you find a booker or a promoter that really really likes your band or the artist but it's definitely possible but to have that tiny link uh, at least to why you're coming why do you want to tour Norway or play Norway I think that could definitely help but not necessarily you don't need an agent but it could be definitely be beneficial of course I mean always I guess <laughs> um if anyone else wants to add anything about live um yeah no one go for it uh, I just wanted to like uh, prop up what Adam said because it's uh, kind of like smart to do it that way, especially if you're like an up and coming uh, artist, band, whatever. It saves you a lot of resources and time it, instead of like trying to get people who doesn't really know who the project is or like what it is. It's much better to be somewhere where there is already people. And since we have this vast majority of uh, festivals, it's a smarter way then like start building because we're not really like culturally not really lean forward like that when it comes to discovering new music so it's smart to know that about the Norwegian market also and there was one thing also that I want to say more to um, support what Celia was saying earlier when it comes to live and festivals is that again with the vast majority or, or diversity with festivals is there's a festival for everything here even though we're like not that many people and not really that lean forward when it comes to music, weirdly enough, we still have a lot of festival people like to drink and party. So yeah, whatever you guys do, you'll find something. And most probably you can always like take direct contact with the festivals also. So yeah. Can I add that I think uh, there's a lot of uh, cities in Norway that are very focused around students. Uh, mm -hmm. But like you have Christiansen in the far south and Tromsø, like way up north that has a very vast student population. And it's a lot easier to engage them than maybe reach or try to reach the 30 to 50 year olds in a way, because they are a bit more conservative. They're especially in Oslo. I think at every night there's at least 10 international bands playing across town. So people are kind of like picky on what they decide to go for we love our music and we love our shows but also the the competition is really really hard so if you just go outside if you're a relatively new act it could also be smart to hit the towns that has less competition and that like yeah as Nura said like people want to party and be social it's dark it's cold we want to get together and doing that at a show can be really, really great. So Tromsø, Stavanger, Christiansen in the south, like there's quite a few uh, cities and towns that could maybe be easier than to sell out a venue in Oslo or Bergen, which 
has like a very very good music scene and has a lot of yeah a lot of shows on <laughs> sorry i was laughing at the balloons but <laughs> no i'm just gonna add to also with the, the the good link with the students um is that the the, the universities that has like jazz uh, teaching jazz and stuff like Trondheim is it also has like a really good niche venue scene you know like you can go there and, and also meet a lot of uh, musicians and just attending each other's shows I think there's a really good some of the cities are really good in that way and, and that tends to be the smaller cities uh, like for instance Trondheim which is a really strong jazz scene so then I saw Inger um mentioning in the chat also about the folk, folk scene, traditional music scene, which is really strong in Norway right now. So there, there is not only a festival for everyone, but there is, there's like a club for everyone as well. But of course, the com commercial side of this, like you won't make a lot of money uh, from all of these places, but you could make some interesting collabs and you can uh, introduce yourself to a, a new audience and, and span out, I guess. So it still has some value. I mean, I will say from my point of view, in terms of I, I've been to a lot of Norwegian festivals and building it, it because it is quite a small scene. Everyone's kind of at everything and very great at networking. So you can build a really strong network within Norway quite quickly. And I would take advantage of that by going to a couple of these events, Trondheim Calling, Bilam, uh, Bilbo Vest, um, Survive like they're all great opportunities to to build and i mean i've met almost all of you at these events and that's exactly exactly what i mean um i wanted to move to recorded music because time is moving quickly and we already had a question um which i'm happy that some of you have responded to thank you about sync opportunities and i just wondered if we could um like speak about it so that anyone watching the recording will benefit from this as well but uh, i think it's a really important thing that a lot of people are looking for opportunities to export their music through sync and um maybe some collaborate collaborative elements as well which i know is different but working with producers songwriters and things like that and nori has a strong history of that so yeah, what are the kind of sync opportunities uh, in Norway and how can people take advantage of them? Um, Alan, you had a great remark immediately. So I don't know if you want to speak more to that. Uh, I can, but I zoned out a bit because I was replying to uh, something in the chat. So if you can oh, just repeat no, it. Oh, no, no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Um, I was just uh, saying that you responded about to the sync opportunities uh, question and I wanted to get it on tape as well. So yeah, what are mm -hmm. the sync opportunities in Norway? What does the sync market look like and how can people connect with it if they're kind of looking to export maybe their music before they head over for a show? <laughs> I think uh, Celia would be a better person to respond to that because i haven't oh, really perfect. done that much sync we i know that we have norway has uh, like a blanket license a white license i don't know what it's called uh with our pro which makes that they can use a lot of like the tono uh registered songs so that it's especially for norwegian artists that can have a really really good like beneficial um spot like one of my producers had made a song with an artist called Amanda de Laga and it's been like the theme song to a major TV show on Saturday night and it's been going for I think seven years now which is become like a weirdly good source of income but it's been also like settled as like the theme song for it so even though you have those blanket licenses it could still be a good sort of revenue I'm actually not so sure how easy it is for foreign artists, exactly. but I think Celia might have some better insights to that. Um, yeah, I would say the the sync opportunities or the sync uh, business in Norway is kind of uh, fragmented, like spread all over all over town uh, or the country, like between production houses and production companies, some creative agencies. 
uh, some managements are doing sync and of course a few specialized uh, companies uh, who are working you know in the in the middle of music and media doing commercial tv movies uh, and there's also a few uh, publishers that are norwegian based and norwegian uh, and indie not major publishers that are working with sync so it's kind of it also feels like a kind of young business in in this town because when I started at EMI in like 2009, Sync in Norway was like one person in e in each um, record label that were like saying yes or no when they got emails about using stuff for theme songs like mm -hmm. I then talked about. But now it's like a more proactive uh, kind of um, vibe <laughs> that you're actually when I make or I don't make music when my artists make music I try to share it with um, you know movie makers uh, uh, people that are working in commercial people that are working in fashion DJs just try to get the music out before it's released to find opportunities so it's really a network based uh thing at the moment i would say um but it's uh yeah alan mentioned a few of the companies i think in the chat mm -hmm. uh, yeah and I, I nora you have also been working a bit with sync right yeah that's true and the thing is uh, you're you hit the nail right on the head is that the saying yeah <laughs> Uh, with it, it being scattered and basically you just have to hit the ground running trying to like figure out who's the person deciding on each and each and every project because it's not really optimized like that and it's not really uh, anyone that really cares about the music that they put on whatever they're making so and when it comes to also the blanket licensing licensing thing is it doesn't really um when it comes to like theme music or if your uh, your music is on the um, sub subtitles no what is it called credits or whatever it doesn't really include that so and that's where also like the real money is to to be earned so if you do some work uh, and it's not really that much because we're not really that many people in Norway anyway you can get a lot of like a return on on the small effort you put in but it's not really like one web page where you can just visit and submit your music like that yeah Amazing. that's that's actually really helpful thank you uh it feels like there's a really good opportunity there again if you're willing to put in the time and network a bit in the country um and i am going to ask benjamin uh benjamin's question because it's a great question and i'm uh but it's going to be one of our last and also if any of you know of any lists of festivals or uh in norway and or anything like that there was a request for that in the chat as well and we would love to share that because obviously having a list of festivals is super useful uh, i can just mention that iq magazine did like a a map of norway like festivals and venues uh, i think it's i think the last one is from, from 2019 but it, it's not that different now so it, it could be a good to check out the market report for live that iq magazine did uh, for norway would be a good way to start amazing Thank you. Um, so yeah, Benjamin says, what tips do you recommend to raise an online fan base artist profile apart from touring and meeting audiences? Are there marketing services, promo, PR that as an international artist you can um, really take advantage of? Uh, Matilda, I don't know if this is more your area or in terms of obviously you operate doing um, a PR company as well. Is that something you do internationally? I haven't done it internationally, like doing international act in Norway yet. But um, what I can say is that uh, in Norway, it's like um, it's not many, um, um, it's not many music blogs or radio stations. So it's quite easy to get a good overview of. Um, of both like the radio channels and and also who's um, uh, publishing uh, like uh, articles about artists, uh, like both press and radio is quite easy to get a good overview yourself. 
uh, if you put like an effort into like looking into the yeah we have like um yeah one big radio channel like NRK and or <laughs> and um uh yeah it's um yeah I would say that uh, but you also have like uh, many that do like um, PR services as company as well uh, so it's uh, definitely worth checking out like partnerships with companies that we can probably like we can probably send some of the good companies um um Norwegian. any recommendations are very appreciated yeah yeah we can type them in here and um uh, but yeah i think it's like um yeah i don't know if anyone else would would add on to that for marketing uh yeah any advice for marketing services promo and pr or even like uh channels i'm sure that as most of um europe uses similar uh digital marketing channels but if there's any other trends that you see or any genre specific trends, I'd be really interested to hear about them. Inga, who's on here, um, is really good at working with international artists into Norway as, uh, within different genres. So I saw that she posted her email in the chat now, so she can be a, a good, a good place to start. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. And um, I wanted to ask uh, Oksana's question as well. So what advice would you have for independent musicians or bands that have an unconventional sound, maybe something a bit more experimental when it comes to trying to get gigs and festivals? What aspects should they focus on when putting themselves out there? Um, okay, uh, Erland, you've already answered in the chat, but in terms of... Uh, trying to I think yeah, Eric like, might uh know a bit because you have an eclectic music taste as well so. <laughs> um as has already been mentioned here it's a very uh the big cities in Norway have very vibrant music scenes for a lot of different subgenres I think and a uh, good place to start is by locating uh the venues that program something in your field and also uh festivals that's for instance if you you're saying experimental uh we have um ultima is a uh, contemporary music festival it's a bit more it's a bit more institutional but they also have a lot of good um they, they have a lot of good experimental programming as well and there's uh, good underground stages here in oslo that are part of bilam as well like uh, uh these names are probably hard to write down uh, for someone not speaking Norwegian, but I can type them in. But um, I would start with that and maybe checking previous artists that you know have toured here, uh, see where they've played. And um, that's that's one way to start at least. Nora? Yeah, I just would like to add also that there's a lot of um, uh, festivals or venues that uh, are kind of like funded when it comes to more like niche or exper experimental uh, sounds, but then they have a lot of mandates of like they have to support Norwegian artists or something, something, I don't know. But uh, like any other um, like reason to throw festivals or parties or some of them also are not funded and need to make money. And then they look at like, can you sell tickets or not really boils, boils down to that. And I think that there needs to be like some kind of link to why you're playing. Maybe try to find someone that is within the same genre, like field as you try to collaborate with a Norwegian artist. So there's a reason, like an entry to get in. You mm -hmm. can play with them or play because of them. But it needs to be like more of a natural reason to why you're here. <laughs> I would say my experience, like Norwegian artists have always been extremely open to collaboration and trying things out. Um, it doesn't always work out. It doesn't always come to loads, but it's just this openness to it. So if there's artists you want to collaborate with or as like a route in, um, just ask. I, I would say be really positive. I don't know if any of you would agree with that or have experience of that kind of collaboration focused way of working oh. 
And I think we are also looking at here in Norway, looking for ways to export ourselves. So I think that collaborating with a uh, foreign artist is a good way for like import export. And I think historically we've been just like the little brother of Sweden and like people haven't necessarily looked at us. So we are like, I feel like overall in the music industry when international industry or bands like project like a genuine interest in collaborating we were like oh my god that's so fun and like we start off in the positive in general and it's a good way to start and if it doesn't work out that way we'd usually be happy to connect you forward to someone we know or yeah if it doesn't work out to collaborating with ourselves absolutely um just we ha only have a few minutes left and I really wanted to focus on uh, networks. Like we have a few organizations that we've talked about already, NEMA and Music Norway. We've talked about some events, but are there any other kind of networks of organization or organizations that people can connect with if they're looking just to understand the Norwegian scene a little bit more? I don't know label if, if there's some that are focused towards labels, some that are focused towards publishers or anything like that. Um, venues like... Uh, are there networks where we can connect with in order to understand? Yeah, or Tuna, go ahead. I was about to say, like, <laughs> really, Music Norway will put you in contact with anyone, anything. <laughs> like, and we're not that many people. So literally, if you at some of these festivals, you'll get to know everyone. And like, the DMs are open. Just send a DM. <laughs> like, Instagram's the way forward. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a good point, Nanora. We're not that many people like I started. Like the, the Norwegian music industry is quite small and yeah, we can help you in any direction, I guess. If if we don't have the direct connection, we can we know someone who has. So so don't hesitate to contact us. And and I would say also there's like like we talked a little bit about the niche niche genres. Um they also have their own organization. It's like uh Jazz Forum for jazz music and and the folk org uh, for the traditional scene. So they are really good entry points as well. And they run their own festivals. They have their own awards. They have like networks and, and events going on. So, but like I said, we'll hit you up with some links if you just um, contact us. So don't hesitate. That's perfect. That's actually exactly what I meant. Those kind of, uh, kind of networks that could just help demystify it. Cause uh, as much as, it's great that there's so much going on. It can be a little bit overwhelming. So it can be good entry points to find the thing that you want. Even if you're, especially if you're not sure exactly what it is you want. Um, <laughs> cool. I, I wanted to end on time. So uh, just any other last, last minute bits of advice and we will uh, close the session. Um, anybody want to say anything else? No, no last bit. Just come hang out. In Norway, it's oh, fine. Yeah, Norway. <laughs> it's truly the best advice ever. Um, I can't recommend it enough. So great. Thank you so much to all of my guests for um being here and for your brilliant questions as well. Uh they've been really, really useful. And I hope yeah, you were able to get what you wanted from this session. So please feel free to send over any other questions and we'll be sending the recording out uh along with um any of the resources that were shared as well. So thank you again, everyone, and have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much. You. Please don't forget to fill the um the little form that will pop up right after you close Zoom. It will take you like literally two minutes. Thank you so so much. Thank See you, you soon. Ciao ciao.